Welcome to It Takes Two. I'm Blair. I'm Chris. And today we'll be talking about Love is Blind, Season 7, Episode 8. A lot of things has happened. Subscribe, like, share, comment, all the above. You ready, Blair? Yep. Walk us. So Ashley asked Tyler how involved he wants to be in the wedding planning process. Mm -hmm. Tyler says very involved. Okay. And she is open to his opinions, but she's but he's going to have to be co-counsel. Um, and then they start talking about their kids' names, and he says that he wants to choose the kid's name, and she says only the boy. Why don't you just tell us your kids' names now, uh, Tyler? Exactly. What names do you have so we can, like, cross that off the list? Exactly. <laughs> like, come on now. A anything to add to that scene? Not at all. Let's go. So Monica and Steven are on a date. Yeah. Steven brought her to do press plow pressed flowers okay. as a workshop and i was just like this is a tricky tricky way of not having to buy her flowers <laughs> i'm about to say it probably would have not been, having to buy her fresh flowers it probably would have been easier just to buy the flowers so right like we're gonna do this press thing and these are your flowers for the rest of, the, of your life exactly pretty much. <laughs> so he says that these will last forever yeah um and steven likes the perk that you know if you do something right you might get a reward with sex so he is that is really excited for sex. That concerns me mm -hmm. because he always talking about sex and always talking about treat me like a piece of meat. What you want, Stephen? Yeah. Also, in this scene, um, there was some certain points of the conversation when they was talking across the, from the instructor mm -hmm. to where he says something and she was like, oh, my God, Stephen, people may not know what you mean. Um, please, like, explain yourself. And the instructor was like, I, I know what he means. Yeah, it was uh, about some type of, like, game or yeah, something like that. Yeah, like, uh -huh. like, like, I'm hip. Like, you know, and then she chose Stevens mm -hmm. as, like, you know, like, I like your colors, but his is a range or, or like, vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, Steven, you probably have a better chance with the instructor than, like, you have with Monica. Probably. Truthfully. Let's keep going. So next, um, Taylor and Monica, um, both of their dads probably aren't, or their dads aren't really too excited about this process, uh -huh. and they don't want to be filmed. Okay. Monica's dad, she says, will walk her down the aisle, um, but, you know, the dad asked her, how do you know he's not a liar like your last boyfriend? Yeah. So Stephen looks forward to proving to him that he is genuine, um, and that was pretty much the end of their date. Anything to add to that? Not at all. Let's keep going. So Hannah goes to Nick's house uh, just to check out the space. Oh, my gosh. And he is living with his parents. I was about to correct you. This is not Nick's house. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Nick's house. And he made it very clear that he is not ashamed to still be living with his parents. Yeah. Um, that this is perfectly fine. He was on the track with uh, football for a while. Yeah. So now he's doing real uh, being a realtor. He's been back home probably for about two years. Yeah. Um, and he's living in the basement. Okay. So. Um, um, he's Nick's mom is usually the one who does cooking mm -hmm. lately. His parents have been asking him to cook meals from them for them from time to time. Yeah. He talks about how his dad feeds the cat. Mm -hmm. Um, so to me, it sounds like Nick doesn't have too many responsibilities when it comes to the house. He have no responsibilities. He's like, I really can't wake up that early to feed the cat. What? Okay. So Nick shows her his childhood room, mm -hmm. and then we go into the basement to see what the um, bachelor pad is giving. What What is it giving? It's clean. Okay. So it's pretty clean. Um, he says that he really doesn't bring girls over. She's the gr third girl who's probably ever seen the space. Oh, my goodness. The she, look on her face was like, oh, my God. And she checks out the pool table that he has, but it's a pool table with a bunch of boxes on top of it. And she was like, the way you described it, it seemed like you were going to have a pool table and maybe like a bar. Like, mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be kind of decked out in a way. But no, it's, it's storage. So it's storage. After they get married, they're talking about moving in together. And Hannah was like, yeah, you're moving in with me. I'm not going to be moving into your parents' basement. What so. are your thoughts, Blair? My thoughts are, okay, I kind of can understand a little bit more about why Hannah is, I'm not going to say nitpicky of Nick, but mm -hmm. feels like she has to give him direction. Mm. because if this is kind of how he's living and not to say, I mean, look, it's hard out here, save your money, do whatever you need to do. But Nick doesn't seem like he's actually that interested in moving out of his parents mm -hmm. house. He seems to be very comfortable and also comfortable with the fact that he doesn't have much responsibility. Yeah. And that's the concerning part for me is that you don't necessarily want better or different for yourself. You yeah. just kind of want to get married and figure it out along the way. And it's just kind of like, well, your wife isn't going to want to live in the house with your parents so i i don't know why i mean nick just doesn't seem to have a lot of get up and go about him the way that i thought he did so um mm -hmm. let's start from from when the mother said that she would like for him to cook for them as as a household mm -hmm. that's very different even though it may sound the same it's very different because your parent may want you to cook for them 
because they like your cooking. Uh-huh. It don't sound that way with them. It sounds like we do a lot for you. Can you at least cook for us every now and then? That's right. what it sounds like. Mm-hmm. Um, Nick, you have misrepresented yourself basically throughout the whole season, my brother. You talked about this bachelor pad or rather this pool table, and you made it seem like it's a pool table to where you basically got a whole lounge to yourself and things like that. But really, it's your father's pool table that's in the family basement that's basically in the family storage Room. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where uh-huh. where they put boxes and everything else, your old bikes and things of that nature. Um, your priorities is a hundred percent out of whack. I have no problem with a person living with their parents. I don't. Um, but I have a problem with someone who lived with their parent and trying to get married. Mm. That's where th- that's where the problem lies. Because I'm like, hey, live with your parents, get your money right, mm-hmm. get your credit right, uh, find somewhere you want to live and things like that. But to take on the responsibility of being a husband and then to actually suggest that she moves in with you mm-hmm. as if you have a place mm-hmm. you do not, your stature <laughs> does not support like your stature on top of you living with your mother. It makes it look all bad. Yeah. You look small. You have very small responsibilities. And then on top of that, like it just comes off as if you're a, a big kid. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? You can't eat. You can't even feed your cat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that's why that delusional thing hit Nick so hard mm. because I think he I think he understands the reality of a situation yeah. that he's living in his parents' basement. Um, and I think that even though he says he's not ashamed about it, I think he knows that he's not kind of living i guess what society would say is like what a man should be doing at his age and i think that's why it hit him so hard when hannah called him out on it because it's just like yeah like you're not popping like you say you are man shame on you shame on you nick for making me support hannah in this scene Mm. shame on you let's keep going well ramses meets marissa's friends yeah uh, things have pretty much been easy for them yep. um their first difficult conversation was talking about um her military service mm-hmm. the friends that asked well if she went back into the military would it be a problem and like would that cause divorce and mm. ramsey says it probably would it's just a core moral thing that he has and he feels like your politics are tied to your ethics he's okay. like politics aren't just these ideas like they affect people okay The friend says, you know, it is something um, to be proud of as far as them serving in the military. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are uh, currently or have formerly been in the military. Mm -hmm. He says, and she's basically, he's saying that he would trust her judgment when it comes to her friends. He says that if somebody had a MAGA hat on, he wouldn't judge them. He would trust that she would know that they're a good person. I have my own thoughts about that. I'm about to say, like, (laughs) you're talking out of both sides of your mouth now. Um, But he feels that for people who, you know, are under U.S. imperialism, it's just really wrong. Okay. The friend asked, how do you teach your kids or how would you teach your kids when it comes to like different moral views? Mm -hmm. Ramses will instill the views that he wants in for his children to have yeah. uh, but at the end of the day they can make their own choices yeah just like how he did with his mother's religion right yeah oh, okay and marissa wants to teach them about her military background she wants to be able to share her experiences take mm-hmm. them on a navy boat because that was something that was such a big part of her life she has dated people she didn't align with morally but she feels like they align morally now go ahead blair um my thoughts are number one with ramsey's I I feel like he's being honest, but I feel like in some ways he's placating. Um, if you're not with the military thing, you're not with it. I think yeah. he's made that very clear. Um, but I think he's trying to be respectful of these people who were service people. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, I'm not going to write y'all off as bad people. But it's like, I kind of think you do think they're bad people. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. like the way he said, well, y'all signed up to go out and unalive people. Mm-hmm. So I think that he really does view people people who have served in the military a certain way and he's kind of trying to skirt around that yeah um but i also feel like marissa she is kind of trying to force this thing a little bit how so um because she's saying that they align morally and i'm just like i think this is someone that kind of you guys don't really align more yeah 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 yeah. um and i think that because you're not in the military now it's not an issue but i think it's going to become an issue when you guys have these conversations you can agree to disagree but it seems like it's something that she's still respects and thinks fondly of and he's just never going to have that respect for it yep. and i think that's really going to bother her so and to add to your point the reason why i think it's really going to bother her because i don't really trust that she really hates her military experience as much as she's leading on with it mm-hmm. i i think she 
I think the same way Tim feels about his time in the military is exactly the same time she feels about her time in the military. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is me probably putting words in her mouth. Tim always said, hey, the best day that I've ever signed, the best day ever was when I signed up for the military. The second best day is when I was released from the military mm-hmm. and things like that. She keeps talking about, and I think she's kind of trying to placate him because of how he talks about how much he don't really like it. Yeah, She's like, yeah, I never go back and things like that. I'm never going back to the military. You should have heard her say it. Mm-hmm. In, in, you heard her say in that scene and she talked about like, yeah, I didn't like it. And you know, to push a button and things like that. But if I have a child and like, there's a Navy boat and then like, I want them to go on the boat and things like that. So they can see my, pa- I'm like, like, like you kind of like, like I'm like, you kind of talking out of both sides of your mouth and things like that. And I think, I think sh- the military was hard for her, but the type of feeling that Ramses have for the military, I don't think Marissa have it at all. Mm-hmm. I think she may say like, oh my goodness, I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. But I, I think she's leading more or leaning, um, putting 20 on 10 on her disdain for her time in the military. I think she's like, I really didn't like it. It was hard. It's some things I had to do that I don't like doing. And that's probably why I won't do it again. Mm-hmm. But I didn't, you know, I didn't really hate my time like that as much as, it would to satisfy Rams, just in my opinion. That's mm-hmm. that's just my opinion on that. Okay, so we move on. Um, Alex and Tim, they're gonna have like a little grill out for yeah. Alex's family, and they're just kind of doing like a pre talk before the family gets there. Mm-hmm. And she's telling Tim that she wants him to talk to the dad separately because he doesn't quite know the full scope of the process. Yeah. Um, and she would prefer that they leave the proposal out of the conversation. And that's why she's not wearing her ring right now. Yeah. So Alex's mom, dad, and brothers are there yeah. um the dad is interested in meeting him but not quite excited then mm-hmm. Tim comes in and he greets everybody yeah she tells them that they are living together and she wants them to feel comfortable with him yeah tim tells them a little bit about himself mm-hmm. um and how him and alex bonded over family yeah they talk about their first argument and how he has to just kind of learn to receive some of what she says mm-hmm. and they're still learning each other facts he shares that his sisters passed away um they cried and talked a lot in the pause he mm-hmm. wants her around for the worst days of his life yeah and so the dad asked him a lot more questions about the navy and just kind of what his experience was like Mm -hmm. so he ended up traveling a lot um she has also traveled a lot he says that he wants to go to scotland he's really into golf Mm -hmm. and the dad it seemed like he was into golf too before ms kind of took over his body yeah um that he was um no tim was born in england Mm -hmm. And um, because his father was in the Air Force and I believe they were saying that that's how Alex's dad was born in Scotland Mm -hmm. and they have family in Scotland because of the Air Force. Almost same story. So um, Tim and the dad have some time to talk alone. Uh He shares that Alex is someone that he wants to make his wife. He reads the letter that he read to Alex that was addressed to her dad. Mm -hmm. And he asked the dad for her hand in marriage. Um, He takes a second to collect his thoughts, but he tells him that this is his baby girl. They just met, but he believes in Tim and believes what he read came from his heart. He accepts Tim as his son Mm -hmm. and um, he has his blessing. Yeah. So Tim goes out, tells everyone that the dad said, yes Mm -hmm. alex comes back in she's hugging her dad Mm -hmm. mom says that she loves the interaction that she sees between tim and alex and the brothers all seem to be supportive as well look he and the father says basically he's happy to have another son Mm -hmm. i say this i don't really have much to add to the scene outside of just a little small details you could tell that um the military did something good to tim yeah like straight very straightforward eye to eye contact the whole time respectful exactly and even when he was reading the letter very straight to the point it was like oh he interviews very good Mm -hmm. like he he interviews very well i thought it was a great scene i thought it was a very respectful scene Mm -hmm. um and uh that's i that's all i have to say about that scene that scene was really straight to the point and very good yeah this makes me root for them even more especially with what we found out yeah um so i'm just happy that they found a way to course correct yeah um and i'm seeing a different side of tim because i will tell you i thought tim was irritating and annoying and tim i'm like i do one. not know why mm-hmm. she is with this man but i see that he has a serious side to him yeah. i mean he is seems to be like an organized person mm-hmm. and you know he's out there cooking preparing things for the family yeah so i'm just like okay like he he's he's solid he seems yeah. pretty solid yeah 
So um, next we see Taylor showing mm-hmm. Garrett her basement apartment unit. So her friend lives in the main house yeah. and she lives in the apartment at the bottom because her work involves a lot of travel. So she really doesn't need like a huge big space. Makes sense. So her fridge is pretty empty mm-hmm. um, and she's been living minimally. We check out her closet. Really not too many clothes out there yeah. in there. Um, and he says that she should move in with him when it comes to when they decide to get married and, and starting their life because he lives in Fredericksburg mm-hmm. and then they'll just kind of figure things out from there yeah well taylor would love to move to san diego she has her parents there a lot of her family is there his only concern is that it is far away from his parents yeah and he just is thinking about his parents and the life that his parents would like as far as being involved in Mm -hmm. his life and Mm -hmm. his wife's life and the children's life and that idea is not exciting for his parents yeah he is open to the idea so he's open to visiting san diego to see what it's like and she's saying that you know with all of her family there like he's going to um just kind of immerse himself and see and get the experience okay um she says that she always has to come back to work uh to dc Mm -hmm. uh for work so it's not like they'll never come back or they're only coming back for holidays dc and fredericksburg is not in the same place (laughs) just just let y'all know okay Uh, Taylor, um, and basically he's saying that he's willing to do it. Um, He's excited about it. Uh He wants to fully lean into this and doesn't want to risk losing her. Taylor's only worry is that he might change his mind one day. Hey, that's a real concern. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna hold you. Um, I don't even know how we would navigate that, uh, Blair. If, Mm -hmm. if, If you was like, hey, my parents live in San Diego, I'd be like, okay my parents live here Mm -hmm. like like that's that's a tough thing to navigate i guess the bright side is he said he loves california Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying but um usually what usually happens unfortunately but fortunately whenever the man gets married he kind of becomes isolated from his family and now he's doing all the woman events uh, things with her family and things like that Mm -hmm. hopefully he can find a balance to still give his family um not equal because it's not gonna be equal but still involve them and still make quarterly visits back home to virginia right absolutely and i feel like these are the conversations people need it's to tough. be having it's tough. like it's tough conversations but we really need to know where each other stands so that way when it's time to make the decision on if we are really going to merge our lives together yeah like we know what each one of us is willing to do so i'm just glad that they're handling this so much early yeah um so we get with steven and monica yeah apparently steven lost his job he Mm. said coming onto the show he knew there was a possibility of unemployment when he went to work he asked somebody hey i still got a job and they were just like you might want to talk to so-and-so yep you don't have a job (laughs) so he's no longer working there Mm -hmm. and monica jokes that she will be his sugar mama you know maybe his baby mama yeah he tells her i think it's hot when you treat me like a piece of meat just tell me to drop my jaws and you know all that type of stuff what you want and monica is saying the sex is great um, but when he ta- started talking about his concerns about the wedding, yeah. it makes her not really feel like being sexual. Yeah. Steven says that every woman has their own combinations. A lot of women don't know their combinations. And she says, well, it's lucky you have a modern woman who can tell you what she wants. Monica said, I know my combination. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And she asked just a little less stabbing in, in the butt. Mm-hmm. And then they start talking about like butt play and then kinks and all this type of stuff. Mm-hmm. And she's just like, this was a great conversation until we started heading down this path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he said that it would be cool to compare here you go talking about vaginas we don't need to talk about that Mm -hmm. so pretty much he doesn't want her to feel forced to have sex Mm -hmm. she feels that she just has to feel safe in the relationship he says for sure um and he says absolutely making sure you feel safe and then you know the kinks the dom all that type of stuff that's something different steven what you want bro i feel like steven be throwing stuff out to see what her reaction will be because he's into all of that bait because he's freaky yeah yeah <laughs> he's like if i say it and she's with it mm-hmm. then, then that's good if not i can always say it's a joke hey mm-hmm. i'll i'll say this coming off the conversation and the things that uh she was saying just last episode about hey maybe these purses don't give me no kate spade hey i like flowers and things like that hey the best time um or maybe the worst time rather to talk about hey let's have sex and have sex and let's have sex a lot Mm -hmm. uh is when you just say i lost my job right like like i think that's the worst time actually yeah um you became immediately unattractive and and for somehow we are not equally yoked Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i think you need to go on linkedin and find another job um and things of that nature good thing you are an electrician you can work for another company very fast because electricians are needed everywhere but yeah you you just came off as like 
just like what you want mm-hmm. is, is basically what I was thinking throughout this whole scene. Yeah. So Hannah is deep cleaning the apartment. Nice. Nick gets home and um, he goes ahead and gets changed. And she's like, so you change from dress clothes to dress clothes. She ain't got nothing <laughs> nice to say to this guy at all. Do she? <laughs> no. Cause then she asked him to take the trash out. Uh-huh. So he goes ahead and takes it out and she tells him, well, you took it out because I asked you. Oh my gosh. She wants there to be things that they both do as far as their chores and responsibilities in the house. Yeah. He, um, she's asking for him to take the trash out he's washing his clothes go ahead and throw her clothes in there as well Mm -hmm. she says that she vacuums every day she cleans baseboards um she would also like to split the price of groceries three hundred dollars a week is a lot for two people no i'm not splitting that um so but he's and then um so he agrees you know to pick up whatever chores she's Mm -hmm. requesting him to do Mm -hmm. then they talk about possibly sharing a bank account and he says that he would probably prefer that they play that by ear yeah and she says that she does not play things by ear okay um either we will keep separate bank accounts or maybe have like us uh our own bank accounts and then have a joint one for vacations or for savings or whatever the case may be but they need to agree and, and figure that out yeah so as far as bills the only bill that he really has is his car mm. and she feels like she's more financially literate than him okay and she asked him so are your parents going to continue paying your bills or are you going to end up joining me when it comes to like being on my car insurance i was completely taken aback a, a when he was like car insurance and phone bill cell phone bill mm-hmm. your mother paying that right man come on bro mm-hmm. and he's like well i mean as long as my parents are fine paying my bills like i don't see why i would need to take on that responsibility wrong answer and hannah tells him look I've been on my own since I was 18. Mm -hmm. He's 28 right now. Um, She's willing to teach him about finances. She's willing to teach him about stocks. Um, And Hannah thinks that she, she knows how she does things and she knows people do things Mm -hmm. their own way. Mm -hmm. Um, And she starts just telling him, look, you are ambitious. You are kind. You are a clean person. It feels like they're best friends. Um, And he feels like he is accepting of who she is and he will protect her. I'm going to make this very quick. You are maybe Hannah see something off camera that we don't see on camera, man. I feel like I'm starting to see it. Yeah, because I'm like, bro, like I feel like, let me critique Hannah just slightly. Hannah, you don't sound like a partner, mm-hmm. right? So when your partner don't know, you don't make fun or belittle them because they don't know. Right now, because he don't know, we don't know, mm-hmm. and now you have to te- do the teaching process and be patient with. But him. it, but mm-hmm. it, it's a lot. But it's. It, it seems like he's not eager to know. It seems like he has no aim to that nothing. Too. He's like, I'm. If my mother want to pay it, no, 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 man, come on, bro. <laughs> like, 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 like. You have to make an yeah. effort to get her to like you. She, Hannah, I understand she don't like you. She don't compliment you. She, she criticizes your shirt. I understand that she was there all day. She's unemployed, so I don't see why she's complaining about cleaning and things of that nature. Seriously, the house should have been cleaned way before I got home. But that's beside the point. Um, but my whole point is like, you gotta grow up too, bro. And and you can't give her the you can't make it seem like she's growing you up because she's having adult conversations and you over there with the I don't know face. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. I think Nick. Um, at the same time, you don't know what you don't know, mm-hmm. but I agree. He needs to be a little bit more eager to learn. Yeah, and I also feel like he is too comfortable like do not tell me that you're fine with your parents foot in the bill and you just gonna ride it out so they don't feel like doing it no more yeah like where is just your like respect as a person as an adult don't you want any no, type it. of ownership no, no, over your it. life as a man no no say it as a man <laughs> i was trying to be nice no no as no a man, as a man like like you're fine being a kid like that is that yeah, is a turn off. It's a turn off. That, that is a huge turn off. And Hannah is willing to work with him. She's I don't know about she's that, pretty harsh about it. I ain't gonna lie. She's pretty harsh about it. But Nick ain't making it that easy. Like mm. I'm just like, it don't even seem like you want to handle your own business. Facts. And I'm just like, you're getting too old for that, sir. Let's keep going. So we move on to Tyler and Ashley. Uh Tyler meets Ashley's dad. Mm-hmm. He ends up getting the dad a gift. And the dad asks, why was she the one? Here goes Tyler talking talking about she was safe Mm -hmm. he could open up to her uh let's keep going (laughs) he says that it was rough growing up she accepted him for who he is and dad tells him like look ashley is the total package the dad asks him what he wants to do in life um he tells him that he is a security specialist um and he says that he is not a cheater he's not gonna lie tyler says that he is ready for family and children 
So for Ashley, she felt safe enough to be soft. Mm -hmm. Um, And in the real world, he's shown himself to be protective and chivalrous. Okay. The dad says that she's his one and only daughter. Mm -hmm. um, And then they, uh, she steps away so they can have like a one-on-one guy talk. Yeah. Tyler talks to the dad and says that he loves her, but, and he wants to ask for her hand in marriage. The dad says, absolutely. If she accepts you, that's cool. She doesn't make stupid decisions. And it seems like he has a lot of potential. So dad is going to let Ashley choose what makes her happy, but, if anything shifts in her happiness, then that's when Daddy Bear is going to arrive. Well, Daddy Bear, come on down because <laughs> it's time to arrive. I only got something quick to say because we got to move on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. This is what it looks like when a guy love bomb you and y'all don't know nothing about each other. Mm-hmm. I don't know nothing about Ashley and I don't know nothing about uh, 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 Tyler. I had to find that out outside of the show. Right. This is what love love bombing do. Oh, you're my favorite person. I love you. Let's get married now. And now you see why I didn't trust Tyler or I never believe Ashley really liked them because of this love bombing. But where of the love bomb? So Monica is with Taylor at yes. her house. Um, Taylor brings up, you know, when women know us and want to suck our D basically saying like Stephen was saying some weird stuff yeah. when we were talking before anyway. Mm-hmm. So Monica's saying that Steven said he had a sleep test yesterday, but she mm-hmm. doesn't know necessarily where he was or if he even we- went to a sleep test. Yeah. Steven ends up walking over to Monica once Taylor leaves out the room so they mm-hmm. can have a conversation. So apparently she read some text messages filled with fetish conversations oh, with some goodness. woman. It mm. was some texting that went on from last night to the next day. Mm-hmm. He says that he was at his sleep test last night. I don't believe you. Um, and she's like, well, why are you pretending to be married? Like, why are you here? Why are you on the show? And he says that he did didn't pretend anything he did something dumb while he was drunk at a sleep test and i'm like how you drunk at a sleep test oh, i thought you supposed to be sleep <laughs> okay <laughs> why are you drinking they don't give you no liquor at the sleep test mm. so i'm just like steven you're full of it mm-hmm. monica says well you were texting today he mm-hmm. was like well i don't know i deleted the message i don't me, think i was texting show today. me the messages and yeah he's like i deleted them wow okay. so it was coupled with a conversation um Basically, the conversation came over from last night to yeah. the next day. Mm-hmm. Monica asked him to Venmo her the money that he owes her, which she was floating him for the past couple of days. Wow. She was like, what were you going to do? Shake my dad's hand while you were planning on cheating on me? Wow. And Steven tells her, I can't do anything to change the situation. He's sorry for hurting her and wasting her time. He says that he shouldn't have come on the show. Mm-hmm. And Monica is like, you're so selfish. That was selfish. And he apologizes and tells her that he will leave her alone. There's only one thing to say about this. Blair was right. Mm-hmm. she said this about ep- she said i think episode two i think it was on where you was where he was like you know what i have something to admit i'm a cheater because i dm with intent and things like that mm-hmm. and blair said out her mouth verbatim i would be more concerned about that yeah you get and th- especially if you have to go to therapy for it what is your thoughts on this blair um my thing is um steven's a whore like wow. i don't know what to say he's a hoe um so do with that what you will he's nasty <laughs> he's a nasty nasty <laughs> he's freaky nasty. man so let him be a hoe. And Steven, stop going around trying to propose to women. Exactly. Well, you know you a hoe. Just do your thing. And then on okay. top of that, coming on the show and things like that. And look, you lost Monica. You lost that money she gave you. You lost your job. I mean, you made Monica look like the right person. This one, mm-hmm. none of us was a fan of Monica. I'm just like, you know what? That's why sometimes we got to be like Monica. Yo, we got to be no, 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 please. y'all. <laughs> because this is how y'all be. This is how some of y'all be. And nah, I'm just like, that's, that's crazy. That's why. That was complete heel turn that I ain't see coming. But actually, I did see it coming because, Steven, you was a weirdo. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? And I, I found it hilarious that she said, you know what? Venmo me back my money. Right now. Right now. <laughs> okay. Since since you can't find the text messages, Venmo me back the money. Dude, mm-hmm. you think they will get back together? Absolutely not. Oh, my no. goodness. Girl, put them in the dust. What is your thoughts on the whole episode? You liked it? Great episode. Looking forward to talk about the next one. Listen here. The next <laughs> one is going to be fire. Yeah. Okay. Subscribe, like, share, comment, all the above. We see y'all next time. Bye.